the mission behind the whole company, Elite FTS, is to educate and outfit those with a strong desire for strength to become better. My mission has never been to be able to target people who rank outside of the top, who would not place strength as one of their top four priorities. There's a, tons of places for that. Tons of places with that. I want people who put training as one of the top four priorities in their life. And I want you to think about How many people have been to one of our seminars before? All right, we've changed the seminar structure several times over the past, oh man, 18 years. I mean, if there's anybody in here that went to one of the seminars that I did when it was just a West Side seminar. I actually made some notes earlier because I really wasn't planning on any doing, saying anything. But when I first started doing the West Side seminars, anybody remember the movie Home Alone? That just came out. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original, the most badass, right? I went to go see that at the theaters when I was right after I did dynamic SWAT work at Westside. Garth Brooks just started to become a name at that period of time. So I'm kind of dating myself here a little bit, but at the same time, I want to put out there the importance of experience and education, relationships, and networking. To go along with that, I founded the company, and actually 90 is when I started training at Westside. When I founded Elite FTS, I was doing the Westside seminar slightly before that, but this is when I would officially say that we founded it. The ever, John's in um, comic books and all this other stuff I really don't understand, but the first Avengers movie came out in 98. That's when I founded the company. Titanic was a movie that everybody went to and act like they didn't cry, but really did cry. All right? and some of you guys may not even know any of these movies that I'm talking about because you weren't born yet. All right? So while I'm founding a company, somebody's wiping your ass with baby wipes. Okay? So the best part, the Spice Girls were popular. All right? So people probably don't remember those either, but some of us do. So it was more of a matter of which was the coolest, Sporty Spice, or I can't even remember the other ones because it really doesn't matter because I was too busy in the gym. But best of all was the movie The Wedding Singer, all right, which if you think back, you got those there. That's when I founded the company. That's when I started teaching people how to train using a West Side method, but also realized I was teaching people about life at the same time. When I first did my first powerlifting meet, first started competing, are you familiar with the movie E.T.? That came out. All right. Rocky III, Eye of the Tiger. I saw that at the theater and went to the gym and trained. All right. That's when I did my first meet was around 82 or 83. So I've paid my dues and I've earned my regrets. So I've earned my right to be able to be up here and to be able to speak and to give advice when it comes to strength training, conditioning, to some degree bodybuilding, powerlifting, but just this industry entirely. I started working as a quasi strength coach for my high school in 86. So I've been in and out of the industry my whole life. This is all I know. So with those things in mind and giving a little bit of a history, like, so now you know why this guy standing in front of you so fucking broken you know, as far as every replacement injury that I've ever had, there's a little context that goes behind that. Because the older, I, I now see myself, and I am that person on the other side of the table. How many people in here are over 40 years old? Put your hands in the air. At some point in time, and you've been lifting for more than 10 years. So same people. At some point in time, some motherfucker sat at a table and started giving you a bunch of advice on what you should and shouldn't do. And you're saying, that son of a bitch, fuck you. <laughs> no, no, and you ignored him, all right? I'm that guy! But see, I know what it's like to be on that side of the table. <clears throat> the reason I wanted Eric here, because I read online and I'll see people and I have people question and ask things about, when do you give up on somebody when you're giving people advice? <clears throat> Eric was my doctor I, when I came to Columbus. 
and 90. And I sat in his office so many times when I couldn't even pay to be there and listen to him give me advice and say to myself, fuck him, and not listen to a fucking word he said, and he'll verify it to this day. He never fucking gave up on me. And then 10 years later, when I needed it, was there to save my fucking life. So when people are talking about, oh, this is when you cut off helping other people. This is when you stop giving back. Fuck that. Because you never give up on people. Because if it wasn't for him, I would not be standing here right now. I may still be alive, but I would not be in this industry and I wouldn't be standing here. The man standing next to Eric would be dead if it wasn't for Eric. So he is a mentor of mine and he's somebody that I want to thank for being in the industry and thank for being that guy on the other side of the table for me. When I retired from powerlifting, it was the sport I started when I was 13 years old, 12 years old. It's all I knew. It's all I ever trained for. Meet to meet to meet. Now, I did have a little de deviation in the bodybuilding, which I'm just going to call a, a, a college mistake. You know, like the, the girlfriend you didn't really date, but you, you, you don't want to admit you dated. <clears throat> so so there, was, there was a few years in there. But for the most part, all my training was training for meets. That's all I knew from the first time I ever was in a weight room. I didn't have the muscle and fitness days like a lot of other people had, or I don't even know what you call them now, where you just go in and you just work out. I was always training for a purpose. There came a time in my life where I was, I don't want to say forced out of the sport, but I had to leave the sport for multiple reasons. <coughs> Shoulder replacement was a big one. Family was a big one. Eric up my ass was a big one. There were a lot of reasons, but there's also a lot of other issues that surround when you do something and it becomes your identity for 30 years. And that's everything you do is based upon that decision, that meat, what's next, everything. It was my first priority. And in some ways, when I look back and earned regret, Justin came into my life at a time when I had to find some type of purpose to train. He doesn't know it. He has no idea the influence he had on keeping me training hard. And that's when I dieted down the first time. So I want to thank him for something he has no idea he even had an impact on me for. Because that taught me a different way to train. A way to train for something that wasn't gonna fuck me up for the rest of my life, which is a whole other story. That, but taught me how to train hard in a way that I could still relate to and still get into the gym. Several years passed from then and adversity hits and multiple, multiple <clears throat> variants across the board. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and I'm not gonna bullshit it and I'm not gonna pretend I'm not gonna hide behind anything. I would have rather have been dead at the time than bed alive. Eric was there for me, and soon after that same time, John pops back up into my life and provides me with another reason and another way to train and gives me a way to train that could deal with this fucked up center of mass between my two ears, which trust me is fucked up, just like you're all fucked up. But now I know and I admit that it's fucked up and I embrace that it's fucked up but it gave me an outlet to be able to deal with everything that I had to deal with, with a training style that to a lot of people would look at and say, oh, that's awesome, you know, that's great, that's hardcore, that's intense. I emailed, or I came into the gym, and maybe some of you have had the day like this, maybe you haven't had it yet, maybe it's gonna come into the future. I came in the gym, and not every time, Justin and I talked about this last night, not every time as you are in this sport and as you train, as you get older, do you want to go to the gym? When you're younger, man, that's all you think about. It's all you want to do. I mean, you're drawing fucking squatters in your notebook. You know, my, you know, I had doodles all over my fucking desk that were squatters and benchers. Never bodybuilders, by the way, but squatters and benchers. And <laughs> so you get locked into this, and it's your whole identity with that 
and it gets, like I said, it gets stripped away. And I, you know, I'm going to try not to get emotional because these relationships, they change lives. When you, if you look for the opportunity, you keep your eyes open and you see what's actually in front of you and you learn to look to embrace what's actually there. Because to me, I text Shelby, and I, but I walked into the gym and I did not want to be here. Not at all. Now, we've all had those days, right? If you, who has never had a day where you walked in the gym and you didn't want to be there? Because if your hand goes up, I'm going to call you out as a fucking liar. <laughs> but I had a day that I walked in and I didn't want to be here, and I knew if I left, I may never come back. So I sent Shelby a text, and I said, dude, look, send me a workout. He sends me a workout back, and it was one of John's leg workouts. 45 minutes later, I'm back there by that leg press machine, fucking puking my brains out, staring at the fucking stars. I'm, I almost killed myself. I'm seeing stars and birds, and, and I'm thinking to myself, this is the most awesome thing in the world. All right, so that's when I gave John a call a week later. And I didn't go into total details of everything that was going on with my life, <laughs> but we hooked up and we started training. So these relationships that you find with inside these four walls of steel that we call a gym, they're life-changing. <laughs> so when people start thinking and they, they start taking for granted the impact that you can have on different people, I had no idea these three guys were going to be here. These are just three, guys, three out of hundreds of people that I feel I personally owe to keep giving back and to passing those lessons on because if, I, I would not fucking be here if it wasn't for them. So when I hear narrative and I hear people say, you know, I can only help people so much before, oh, you know what, that's starting to get too personal. It's, getting, it's cutting into my client base. It's cutting into my income. Here's my advice to you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Because that person may not be able to afford it. That person may not have the capabilities to afford it. What's more important, continuing this life, this culture that we have inside these four walls and letting it be what it's supposed to be and that it's always been, where you plant a seed. We're reaping the harvest of the seeds. People like Bill Kazmaier and, you know, greats of yesteryear had planted. There was no such thing as a personal trainer or strength coach 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Those professions started because somebody took the time to fucking want to help somebody else. And now we're all reaping the harvest of the plants that they provided. But people sit here and bitch because they plant their own harvest and can bitch and complain because they water and nothing grows. Dude, you're swinging on the trees that those fuckers planted. You're planting the harvest for these people down here. That's soil. Keep putting fucking soil in the ground and stop pouring concrete. All right, that's what's going to continue to make Lifting weights, strength sports, awesome and great and change lives and make it what it is. Make it why we're all here. Make it why everybody gets together. The mission behind the whole company, Elite FTS, is to educate and outfit those with a strong desire for strength to become better. My mission has never been to be able to target people who rank outside of the top, who would not place strength as one of their top four priorities. There's a... Tons of places for that. Tons of places with that. I want people who put training as one of the top four priorities in their life. And I want you to think about what falls in those top four priorities. You can have family, religion, work, kids. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that fall in there. So for it to fall as a top four, it's pretty serious. For a lot of you, it's how you make your living. All right, it's how you deal with your own fucked up mess between your ears. It's how I do. It's how I make my living too. You know, it's how we cope. You know, that's also how a lot of other people cope who today in today's world are being fucking brushed off and ignored because they can't pay 20 fucking bucks or they won't register for a website to be able to ask a freaking question. That's the kind of shit that pisses me off with what's going on today. And it's not going on everywhere. So I'm not going to go on a complete total rant, even though I do think I am ranting right now, if I actually think about it. Um, 
Did that happen here? No, it doesn't happen in real life. It only happens online. So don't participate in the false narrative of the bullshit that's going on online. Be better than that. Be the person that's going to extend the hand and help and be able to provide the answer and be able to help people get better. All right. Knowledge and wisdom are two different things. You know, for years I was in the process of acquiring knowledge. You're in the process of acquiring knowledge. Keep acquiring knowledge. Learn, 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 learn. You never know everything. I mean, I thought when I graduated high school and got my first job as a personal trainer at a health club that I was the best trainer in the world because I knew all the fucking weeder principles. I knew them all verbatim, man. I can't tell you what they are now because most of them are stupid, but they're strip sets, try it up, you know, but I thought I had it all figured out. You know, then you learn something else and you think, oh man, I don't know shit. Then you know, I learned, then I meet Louie and I found out I really don't know shit. So you want to be in a constant process of acquiring the knowledge. The motto of the company of Elite FTS is to live, learn, and pass on. What that essentially means to me and what I try to empower amongst everybody else is let's think about this as a training log. I, I personally hate training logs, but people keep training logs. It is what it is. If you're in the gym and you spend all your time writing notes in the training log, are you really training or are you writing a fucking book? All right, so if you're in the gym training, train. If you're in the day living, live. You know, don't worry about shit that's happened in the past that you can't change. Learn from it. You can't predict the future, but you can set objectives for it. But you certainly have a choice on what you can do right now, today, and how you're going to embrace that and how you're going to frame it. So many times when I talk to people, a lot of the things that they'll bring to my attention and advice they have and questions they have, all I simply have to do back to them is change the narrative. They're asking the wrong questions. You know, and you all do it. When you start asking yourself, how come I can't? Why are you not asking yourself, how can I? Same, the, this is the same context, the questions changed. So to truly live, ask better questions. That's why we set up a Q&A. That's why we have training articles. That's why we have the content on the site. We don't have, I don't have a program that I sell. I don't have XYZ program. I don't want a program. I want to help everybody else develop their own program. What's your training philosophy? How can we make it better? You know, Swede's here and he's got the fifth set and that's fucking awesome because he developed his own philosophy. What's yours? I'm not saying don't follow somebody else's because a coach can help you expedite the process substantially. Follow those coaches, learn from those coaches and, and use what they've used. But also, if that's where you want to go, ask them questions about how they discovered their path. You want to learn from them, but you want to walk the same path. Unless you just want to be trained from them and don't, you know, don't give a shit either way. Then everything I'm saying is used towards your own business and reframe it with different questions. The learning of the live, learn, and pass on is you never know everything. John probably said shit up here that you were like, what the fuck did he? I know I did. Like, what the fuck was that about? So I keep a notebook with me at all times and I write it down. So next week I'm going to say, John, what the fuck was this about? And then I'll learn more about it. You know, we all have cell phones. I'm not going to sit here and complain about cell phones. I'm not that fucking old. But I do think everybody should carry around a notebook and be able to write things down if you have questions. There's something, and Eric may be able to get into it or somebody else can get into it. There's something about physically writing things down that ingrains in your brain more than writing it on a fucking notepad on a phone. Big time. So always learn, always try to get better. If you're in a personal training structure or you have your own gym or you're trying to build your online clientele and you can't figure out why you're not getting better, I'll tell you the answer. You suck at learning where you suck. And more than likely, it's probably business. It's like, oh, you know, I'm a trainer. I don't need to know about business. Well, let me flip this on you. If an MBA with no personal training experience or no strength experience started a training center 
and started training people, how would you feel if your background is in exercise science, nutrition, and training? I know your answer. That's bullshit. He's not qualified. Am I, am I correct? Let me flip it. How do you think that MBA feels when you go and start a business with no fucking business background? Things start to make a little bit more sense. You know, there's something called a SWOT analysis, an SWOT, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Look it up online, you know, Google image search it. It's the easiest way to do it. Do one on yourself. Do one on your business. Figure out what your strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are. And then you can build upon what those weaknesses are. That's learning. That's forward learning. There's also a lot of worthless learning you can do, which is reading a bunch of stupid bullshit online, which isn't educating you in any way whatsoever. We are all time strapped. We all have the same number of hours. And all this technology is supposed to be giving us more freedom and more time. But yet it's taking it all away because you're spending time learning the wrong shit and looking at the wrong stuff. Don't look at that. Find your weaknesses and build those. There's always time to go read the stupid shit later or be like me. You know, I have what I call my political advisor that I'll call on a Friday before a seminar. I'm like, look, what the hell's going on? Just in case somebody asks me a question about dick pics, I know what's going on. You know, he'll give me a summary that I know. So you can ask me and I kind of know what's going on, but I really don't because I don't read the news. I'm too busy working on my own weaknesses. Passing on, the third part of the live, learn, and pass on is going back to what I, very, what I said at the very beginning. You know, don't give up on people because they're the ones that need it the most. But at the same time, don't let people take advantage of you. And I know that contradicts itself. And that's your own personal decision on how you're going to be able to handle that. But you can't let people take advantage of your time because it's doing a disservice Let's say you're, you have time and this is your profession. I understand that. We have to sell products for me to be able to even put out content. Without product sales, there is no Elite FTS. I understand this more than anybody else. And we put out more content than probably anybody else and charge nothing for it. W without product sales, there's no content. There, I may be on YouTube babbling and ranting, but probably wouldn't be doing that because I'd be working for somebody else trying to earn an income. But you have to be able to know and be able to know what that point is because <clears throat> with knowledge comes wisdom. And wisdom is the experience, but that's not necessarily just because you're older, you're smarter. Experience is getting punched in the fucking face, getting kicked in the nuts, dealing with adversity. Don't run away from it, run towards it. Learn from it, use it to build wisdom. When you're able to build the wisdom, you're going to be able to decipher between those people you do want to reach a hand out and help with and the people that you feel are going to be taken advantage. Because when you start spending too much of your time helping those people who are taking advantage of your time, you're, you're, you're doing a disservice to your business for one thing. More importantly, you're doing a disservice to the person that can't afford the help that really needs it because those are the people who are going to be the drivers of the industry that are going to be the future role models that everybody looks up to. Eric did not turn his back on neither me nor John. And who did you listen to today? If there's anything you walk away from today, please let that be that. Thank you.